Hi, my name is Dan Larritsen, and I'm going to walk you through how to best buy LED lights for your premises. Now, I'm going to show you our PSUFO Max as a demonstration and show you what to look out for when you buy LED lights for your site. The first thing you want to look out for is the energy efficiency of your fittings. Usually traditional lights have got less than 100 lumen per watt output. Now just to put that into perspective, this fitting provides 185 lumen per watt energy efficiency. That is unrivaled top of the range. So the range is all, all the way from below 100 to 185 lumen per watt, which means that you can get the double the amount of output, or in other words, you can have double as efficient lights if you look out for the lumen per watt factor. Usually LED lights are somewhere between 100 and 185 lumen per watts. And the higher lumen per watt you get, the more money you will save on your energy bill. The second thing you want to look out for is how many LED chips is actually on the fitting. Now, our fittings usually have got between 450 and 900 LED chips. Now, that's important when your fittings hit the five year mark. So they've lasted for five years. At some certain point, some of the LED chips are not gonna be performing optimally anymore. The more chips you've got, the longer they'll last and the less impact you will have of a few of the fit, uh, chips failing. So say you are using this PS UFO Max and you've got 900 LED chips on it. And so let's say 10 of them fails, that's 1%. Nobody's going to notice that in any way, shape or form when you've got 900 chips. The next thing you want to look out for is the color of the chips. So LED chips are really, really smart and you can get them in any color you want. Traditional lighting has been starting out at a very bright white color. And then when time goes, they'll become yellow, then they'll become purple, then they'll become blue and in the end they'll die, right? LED chips will keep the same color throughout its life. But you want to choose the right color. So if you go to Starbucks, you will see 3000 um, Kelvin lights. That gives a very nice atmosphere. It's very cozy. You nearly want to fall asleep there. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got 6000 Kelvin lights, which are used in hospitals and in pharmacies. And this white light is really good for cleanliness. But 6,000 um, Kelvin is a bit bright if you have workers who are not that concerned about everything being 100% clean, but you just want a nice environment where people are in their optimal conditions. Now, the optimal conditions for a human being is the same conditions that you've got outside in broad daylight. That's 5,000 Kelvin. And that's what we recommend for most of the sites. If unless there is anything specific to it, I would stick to around 5,000 Kelvin. Next thing you want to notice, and this doesn't apply to everyone, but the, qua the, the quality of the light is another factor that you need to look out for. So the quality of the light is measured in CRI. And the CRI has a specter of zero to 100%. Now, 100% is basically, you will be able to see the colors and the details of everything, just like if you were outside in broad daylight. That's a CRI of 100. You can't get that with the LED lights, but you can get to 97. 97 is pretty good, <laughs> but most sites doesn't need 97 CRI. Most sites needs seven, 
70 or 80. That's fine enough for anything you want to do. If you've got some special requirements, an inspection area, or if you're very determined on the colors of your car, let's say you're producing you know, paint for high quality cars, you want it to be exactly the same inside as outside. You want to choose a high CRI, somewhere between 80 and 97 CRI. The next thing you want to look for is the driver. The driver is the heart of LED fittings. They determine how long time are they going to last. Usually you want to make sure that you're using a high quality driver and that will usually push up the price quite significantly because the drivers is a huge part of a, a huge costly component if you want to use a good quality one that will last longer, right? A good quality driver will last a minimum of five years, if not seven or ten. And we'll get back to that. But you see, if you buy fittings with a cheap driver, you're going to buy them twice in the same period of time where you could have bought one. And that's even disregarding the cost of installing a second fitting after two or three years when they start failing. So drivers spend the extra 10 to 20% on the cost to get the best drivers you can afford. Another thing I want to get back to is sensors. Sensors have become hugely popular in the last few years and with good reason because there are so many benefits to sensors. On this fitting, the PSUFO Max, we have both motion sensors as well as daylight sensors. So I'll walk you through both of these. The motion sensors basically detect if there's any movement within your area, let's say between 15 meters away from the fitting, right? So you've got an aisle and you haven't got that much movement all the time. You've got a guy in a forklift coming in on a regular basis. Every time he comes in, when he's 15 meters away, the lights will turn on and they'll be stay turned on between one, three or five minutes, depending on what you need. After that, they'll dim down or turn all the way off. All of this can be preset. But imagine that you have a warehouse running 24 seven and you've got, you know, aisle number 35 where people only come in, let's say once a day. The rest of the time, the lights would traditionally be on. With these sensors, they will turn on when somebody enters the aisle, five minutes later, they'll turn off, dim down and turn off, and you will have saved loads of energy. Not to talk about the lifespan of the fitting, because with LED lights, the more that they're turned off, the longer they'll last. And that's why we love sensors, because not only do they save a lot of money on the energy efficiency, but they also make the light fittings last longer by using them less. This fitting has also got daylight sensors. Now there's a new regulation, at least in the UK, where all new warehouses will need to have minimum 25% of their roof covered by skylights. Which means that most of the new buildings that you'll see can benefit from having daylight harvesting sensors. They work like this. Whenever the sun is shining and you have more than 300 lux inside your warehouse, these fittings will dim down and turn off. In the summertime, you might have sunshine more than 12 hours a day. And hence, these fittings will be off more than 12 hours a day. That's another 50% saving on your energy consumption and another prolongedness of the lifespan of your fitting. To me, that's just a no-brainer, right? The last thing I want to go through is that recently we've started to add remote controls to all of our high bays. And there's a good reason for that. Now, first of all, 
If you want to make any changes to the sensor settings of your fitting, you will need to get up to 10 meters height where the high bays are usually um, installed with, with, without uh, a remote control. That means that you will need to get a lifter and two men to go up there. It's going to take a long time and it's going to be a lot of hassle. With this remote control, you can stand on the ground, you can push the button and you will change the settings of the fitting. You can change the set out, uh, standby settings to three, two, one minute or five minute, whatever you need. The other fit thing that you want to use this for is that you can actually dim up and dim down the lights. So usually when we install these PS UFO Max, the clients requires 300 lux. Well, our fittings are really, really powerful and usually we'll be providing somewhere between 300 and 500 lux. So if you want to save a bit more energy, you'll just take your remote control and we'll dim it down to say 350 lux, whatever suits the workers on your site. That's an additional energy saving right there. And the best part of this is that if the situation of your site should change, you need to remove move some racking or you need to have an inspection area or you need to pick a pack in another area, you can change the light output of these fittings with a remote control, change the sensor settings to whatever you need and you're back to, to, to where you started. This is really, really valuable and we provide it free of charge with all of our high bay fittings. Anyways, you know, I hope that this got, gave you some useful information. And if you want to know, know more, then reach out to us at www.polarislight.com. Looking forward to having a chat. Thanks, guys.